Hello, so, well, it's me, and we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna do some commentary for this thing. So, let's see, let's start with opening the task again. Third layer of the abyss, no bonk, <laughs> three, that's what it's called. Uh, it seems like the state didn't load, so let's go with Bats of Destiny. And here we are back again. Um, I believe no other modification needs to be done here for this commentary. Maybe uh mm. Oh of course. Here. This should be uh this should be better, right? There we go. And uh let's get right to it. So first of all I'm gonna skip through the the part that is not the swooper manipulation. There's there the the bats the bat manipulation. I'm just gonna uh, this this part fifth dispense did all of this. I didn't do them, so I, I'm sure he has a lot to say about uh, this part. Like, yo, look at that slide kick, dude. Uh, but I personally, uh, I don't know. I don't know anything about this part. I'm not an expert at uh, even with normal movement optimization. So let's start here. Uh, first of all, I asked fifth dispense to get uh, within the radius of this bat as soon as possible among these four bats, uh, this one is the one I want to activate because it's closest to where I want the the first bat to go. So I asked him for uh, two things. I want him to get inside a radius around this bat, so get within a certain distance, and then stay within uh, an exact relative angle between the bat and Mario for one frame. And so this causes the bat to start uh, coming down from the from a stalactite, and next thing, it will start chasing after Mario, or it'll start targeting Mario, sort of. So I go towards here, and then back to the left. So, so I go into the right and back to the left. This makes the bat more to the right from our perspective, uh, more to the east, and then heading a little bit more to the west, and that is what I want to do. Let me just drink some water, by the way, I'm not prepared for this commentary. <laughs> Alright, so, now why do I want to do that? Well, I want this bat to bounce off of this, uh, the walls of this blue coin switch, which is why I had Mario come up here too. The second reason for why I had Mario come all the way uh, down south here is because I don't want to activate the other three bats, which I'm going to need later. So I left them alone, and uh, here the bat hits this wall and comes towards this direction and we'll hit this wall and we'll go to the left uh, or to the east in our case and here I do a pause buffer you're gonna see a lot of these well you already saw a lot of these and why I do that you see that the arrow this yellow arrow keeps moving after uh, here can I low state from here yeah this, this works okay good <laughs> I should probably learn to save state from here on but you can see the yellow arrow moves like that I'll, I'll just show it to you here so you see see the yellow arrow moves like that. 
uh, there's two reasons I want to do that. The first one is that I want to make the bat move more downwards. Uh, the, the bat kind of faces the direction the yellow arrow faces. The red arrow tries to follow the yellow arrow, so there's a little bit of delay. But uh, you can ignore the red arrow pretty much effectively. You only need to look at the yellow arrow for uh, the basic casual explanation. So here the yellow arrow, the, the red arrow would have went up and followed the yellow arrow to the top, meaning the swooper would have went upwards a little. But we bypass that by pausing, and uh, the yellow arrow keeps moving. So the red arrow now follows and goes down again. So this changes the the destiny of the bat. <laughs> where it was going to go, we now change to where it will go now. It was going to hit this upper diagonal uh, wall, but now it's going to hit this bottom wall instead. The second reason I did this, the exact length that I paused, is because on the frame that the bat hits this wall, it reflects based on the red arrow. So this yellow arrow now goes that way. It reflected off of this wall. Uh, now the bat, well, its red arrow needs to follow the yellow arrow again, so now it will do this derpy turn around the, the wall. It was, it was like just hugging the wall for like four frames or so. Anyway, it's now just doing this. And this is perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. Because I want this bat to go all the way here come all the way down and touch the slope you can see the you can kind of see this there's a slope here so I want this bat to touch the slope and the reason I want to do so is because when it touches the slope the bat will go up much higher so you, you see right now by the shadow that is very low it is going to be like up here or something like that I want it to then come all the way back all the way up and come all the way here so I can bounce off of three bats and reach this alcove and uh, Mainly, the single bat is the uh, time waster here, or it's like this time cap, I guess. It is the most uh, limiting part of this the whole thing. Every other factor is uh, not a problem. What, once we know this bat can be reached, uh, can, can reach this part by a certain amount of time, then we know everything else can be uh, lined up to, to make that, to make, to make everything else possible. Uh, I'll explain more as I go. So, um, I've been working very, just mostly on the single bat and where it should go for a long time. And uh, this is what I came up with. Uh, you see here that almost everything here does not need a pause buffer. And that's just, uh, I guess probabilistically it was likely that it didn't need to have any pause buffers. Let me save state again, by the way. Uh, yeah, here you can see I do another pause buffer. Uh, the same... Uh, the same logic applies, so I just pause buffer. This literally it. I just <laughs> just pause buffer to get a good angle and a good position. That's that's literally it. Some parts will need a lot of pause buffers, but uh, I'll explain that at the end. So right here, I well I'm gonna have to show this uh, part. Uh, it's about here. Mario will. Uh, yeah, Mario comes towards this uh, north again, and the reason I do so is to activate this bat. So I get closer to this bat, I activate it, and uh, I use the tool called, called Waffle to create a task while not change the pause buffer. So I know when to pause buffer now, because I didn't manipulate any of the other bats. I only manipulated this bat, and then I made a task. And then I used Waffle to uh, keep the pause buffers that minimally manipulate this bat while I use the joystick to manipulate all the other bats. So I just slowly approach this thing and then I uh, I just let myself get hit because I'm too lazy. I tried a bunch of other configurations until uh, I found a one that I found one that works that makes the second bat the second bat uh, go towards this uh, hallway along with the first bat around uh, approximately the same time. I had to try a bunch of... Uh, it took me a bunch of tries, but this wouldn't have been possible without uh, Waffle, so i got to give credit to that. I'm not going to show this what Waffle is here, because it's still in beta. Uh, it's still in production. Where There's still a lot of tools that needs to exist, and one of the things is that I worry that if I open it right now, 
that my computer will crash. Um, it never, it never crashed my computer ever, but I'm still worried. All right, so I mean, I doubt it'll happen, but I'm still worried. Okay, and especially since I'm recording OBS right now. Uh, who knows? <laughs> who knows what will happen? So now I got two bats uh, going on right now. Basically, I'm only focused on this bat that took the very long trip. The second bat, um, I I just. I just tried one uh, minute at the start, and then I just let it kind of play out and see what happens, and I just tried it over and over again. Uh, here you'll see the bat is about to hit this uh, wall here, so I do a bunch of pause buffers uh, soon, yeah, like that, so the bat will not... I remove a lot of frames of the bat going to the, to the right here, so that... Uh, well, actually, I guess it's not about to hit this. It's about to hit this upper wall. Sorry. Um, so I'm trying to avoid that. So as you see here, I just the bat barely, like <laughs> the bat just barely avoids this bottom wall, just barely, and uh, it doesn't get reflected by this wall because it's facing the direction that the wall is facing. So uh, no reflection happens when that happens. Now the bat. Now, now here I do a lot, a, a very long pause buffer, and another very long pause buffer, and another four times, by the way, so one more. And that just makes it barely skip this wall. So it was pretty difficult, but this way I can dodge the wall on the right and have it touch the wall on the left instead. This makes it go all the way uh, a lot more higher instead. So let's go and look at that again. So we have this bat come down here. And I guess I should talk about the third bat a little bit. But that's the easiest part. It's not that easy, but it's still... I kind of underestimated this uh, third bat. I was going to use this bat you see on the left. You'll see it now. Um, yeah, this bat. But instead I used the bat on the right because it gives me more time to uh, for the bat to like once I activate the bat I can like just leave a bit sooner so I'll just save state and uh, cause, because I realized I need to do quite a lot actually I need to run to full speed and then I need to dive and dive roll all that before I actually touch the bat so so I actually need a lot of distance. So having to to choose this uh, the eastern bat was actually uh, gave me more time, gave me more leeway. Um, you can guess, but a lot of this is very suboptimal. Despite uh, despite a lot of improvement has been made, uh, this is about I'd say it's about 14 minutes uh, time save. I guess it's from the previous world record task. You remember I saw, uh, you saw the theory task? Uh, that's obviously not the real task. This is the real task. This is legitimately a, a full task and a new world record for this uh, category. Um, but yeah, let's, let's see this. There's a lot of really awkward straining going on here. Um, I'm not going to explain all of it because this bat bounce, I didn't do it either. <laughs> Fifth Dispense did that too. Um, I do have a version where I did it, but it's not that good, so I just told Fist, hey, can you just, can you just do this for me, <laughs> right? Because, I mean, I set everything up, so it shouldn't be, I, I show that it's possible, all that needed to be done was to do it optimally, and so he did it optimally. Walking into this door, going to the platform, he all, he did all of it. So you, little, you see this little mini free run where he uh, does the vertical speed conservation. Yeah, that one. Uh, that's also his doing. Uh, what's what about here? I guess you can dive roll a little sooner, but I guess you can dive like right now. That makes sense. Um, what about an angle? Could he have gotten a better angle? Because obviously this is a little bit weird, but I mean, Ever did the same thing. I think. I think Ever also had this bad angle, and I mean, I think it's unavoidable. But and especially, I'm not one to talk because I don't know what this entails, uh, tasking this part. Um, so let me get to the improvements that I got, which is, 
I'm going to talk about his improvements because there's a chance that I might uh, make this, these improvements now uh, in a few days because Tyler is looking into a fire bounce of uh, shifting sand land just a few stars before this and that will mess up the global RNG and I'll have to redo the star and this will give me a good excuse to implement these uh, time save ideas I have. The first idea, uh, what was the first idea? Uh, the first idea is something that I'm going to implement anyway, so I might as well just explain this to you. This is very relevant. Is that these two lower bats uh, that are relevant to us, which is here, they're kind of in an awkward position. When I dive roll, um, I have to decelerate a lot. I actually, I think fifth dispense to this part. Does he have to decelerate a lot? Actually, not that much. Um, from here. So let's see the dive. Oh, this is actually not that bad <laughs> for if there's any deceleration. Uh, there's a lot of deceleration here because you have to strain sideways. That's a lot of uh, opportunity cost. Uh, that's what I would call it. Instead of accelerating, we're straining sideways. Let's look at that one more time because uh, I just want to look at the speed value. The moment he dives. This is the speed value, by the way. The moment he dives, 47.1, which is pretty good, because you could have had like 46, uh, depending on what frame of running you decide to dive. Uh, the best case would be 47.35, uh, if you didn't like dive beforehand or something. You would have to. <laughs> I that would be unreasonable. I'm not going to think about that. Anyway, 47. Uh, it's going up at a decent rate. Speed. Oh, the speed now goes downwards. Decelerate, decelerate. 44, 43, 41, 40, 39, 38, 37, 34, 32, 31. And, <laughs> oh man. So a lot of time is lost due to straining. I told you I have like basically full control over what the lower bats where the lower bats will be once I decide where the top bat will be. So, ideally, they would not be like this. Um, the second bat, which is uh, here, it's here. It, the second bat here should be like more towards this, um, somewhere like here. And then this third bat should be more like somewhere like here. Uh, that is on the frame of uh, bouncing. So they should be a little bit more closer in a line, but. Uh, that's what's uh, going on. Um, they're they're kind of bunched up together, which is really difficult to to use. So I can fix this pretty easily, and I'm going to, but I'm not going to fix it right now because of the next issue, which is that uh, Tyler's uh, new new time save idea. If it works out, might mean I want to st start tasking from the beginning instead. So this is why I'm not making uh, adding this time saver right now, but uh, waiting for that uh, for that conclusion. So here, <laughs> behind everything, this whole time is uh, my Desmos graph, which is used for a lot of things uh, related to this maze. But for today, for this current topic, I'm going to talk mainly about uh, this top part. So this. Upper purple door it should not be purple. Let's uh, change the color. What should we make it? How about like yellow? Because the doors are brown, so yellow is close enough, right? Let me just uh, start explaining what these uh, circles are. So these are when I think Mario should start. Uh, well, so right here is when I think Mario should start diving. So Mario dives, and then Mario does a dive roll, which is a little higher, and then Mario hits the first bat, so he bounces. Second bat, he bounces again, and then he hits the third bat, and reaches this corner just barely. <clears throat> so it turns out that uh, if we do this very ideally, then we can actually start like bouncing way back here. And the reason I want to do this to start all the way back here. So the bat moves very slowly, so 
I want to use up the top bat as soon as possible while still being able to reach here because Mario is faster than the bat. Waiting for the bat to get closer to this alcove is slow. So we want to just have Mario bounce off of this bat as soon as possible. Um, even more ideally, if we had like extremely good luck and extremely like technical bullshit that I will not explain, technically we could start bouncing from like all the way here, uh, which is ridiculous because there's a wall here. So that's that's not actually realistic, of course, but. I decided to exclude that possibility. Uh, I gave myself a bunch of leeway. I didn't. I took out all the hard parts. These really technical parts are honestly infeasible for a human to task. So I'm going to take them out. Um, whoever's going to task this are going to have to use a lot of programs to uh, to make that kind of uh, kind of improvement. It would save compared to the strat I'm looking at right now. It would save about three frames. Three frame. You know what? I don't know how many frames it saved. It can't possibly save more than, like, like uh, five frames, right? Five. Um, five. Yeah, yeah. Let's go with five, but lower. Like an average of three frames. Um, it's really not much. So let's just go with this for now, and just leave it at that. So. Um, I'm not going to go into detail what those technical things are because it's 3 a.m. I should go to bed. So I'm not. Uh, I'm slurring a lot of words here as it is. So let's just get this done with. Um, let's see. So these are all where the bats should be by the time Mario bounces. So uh, this bat would be somewhere like here, and this, this bat would be somewhere like here so that's how I, that's how I need to uh, I need to make sure I remember that like this is where the bats need to be not like they need they can't be in like a actually in a straight line they need to be like about to hit these lines as Mario is going the, uh, through this through the bats um, and so I'm gonna have to change the top bat uh, and make an improvement on that because you've seen these uh, excessive amount of pause buffers going on, right? Well, not this one. This one's actually pretty good. Well, maybe a little improvement could be made here. I could probably just use one pause buffer on this uh, bounce, but it's the later part that you've seen. Oh, here it's also a lot of uh, pause buffers, huh? but that part's worth it. It's obviously a uh, this these pause buffers, and especially these four pause buffers that take up a lot of time. And I could save a total of one whole second out of this task if I can uh, if I can eliminate them uh, by a decent chunk. I can't 100% eliminate them. That's impossible because the bat needs to go from here and reach here. And if I were to draw a line on it, you can see that. The wall is just strictly in the way, I believe. Yeah, it's like this. So you want to have a little bit of pause buffers so that you go like this, and then a little bit of pause buffers so that you can go like that. Let me try to draw it again. Um, just a little bit of pause buffering so you can uh, turn like this much, and then a little bit more so you go this much. Um, so the direction you want to be facing well, what should it be? I think it should be a little bit closer to like this, I guess, because you have a lot more time to pause buffer on towards the right, but not as much time to pause buffer to the left, which means the efficiency of pause buffering decreases at this top part. By how much? Um, that's a little hard to say. In fact, I've made a graph specifically for that. Um, well, not specifically, but for a lot of things. Here, I try to guess what the effect of pausing does to uh, does to the bat. What kind of effect it has on the bat? So this is the amount of frames I'm pause buffering, and this is 
exactly when I'm pause buffering. So, and uh, this this line, this line is about uh, is trying to. Uh, this line is for when the bat converges back to its uh, usual behavior of uh, following where the red arrow follows the yellow arrow. So this blue line is when those two arrows diverge. So I guess I should give a simple explanation. So this red line is just a sine wave. It's the path that uh, the the bat's arrow, it, it oscillates like this, up and down, up and down. But if you pause buffer right uh, here, you can get a cut in that uh, in this uh, oscillation, you get a little uh, this little uh, different behavior going on here, and uh, it's not just this. If only if it was this simple, right? Then uh, things would be pretty easy to understand. But there's an additional effect. I'll remove this. Where was it? No, not this one. Uh, here, which is this blue line, which is that the bat moves sort of linearly. Uh, at its maximum turning speed, this is its maximum turning speed. It can't move any faster. To try to, it tries to catch up with this red line, and eventually it does, because the red line will eventually turn back, right? Like you can see, it turns back here. So the blue line needs to catch up to this thing, and so this final purple line is when it catches up. And so I uh, change the amount of time you pause, and now we have this big uh, difference, but. Uh, now here it's just catches up sooner because the arrow is coming back again. So and this is uh, when in the sine curve I decide to start this turning. So you can see here that it immediate there's no blue line. It immediately just uh, reaches here and just starts going down. This is because uh, well because it already met itself right here and this is the kind of pause buffer I do often is to try to remove this entire upper part which is uh, when the bat is going upwards and instead I have it go more downwards by removing these uh, top parts and uh, there's a reason why I might not want to do that is when I don't want to go up or down and that's where I'm in a little bit of conundrum I don't know how to manipulate the bat so that it doesn't overall doesn't go up or down and uh, I would use this for like forward spacing uh, of the bat to hit a wall sooner than not um, that's a bit of a technical thing to talk about which I might be able to talk about right now actually so I guess I'll try it's right here right here so you know what? I'm a little proud of this so I am going to show this to you before I end this video right now about soon enough but look at this bat like uh, this took a lot of work to do <laughs> you see this little corner here this is the wall that I want to reach and it's pretty difficult to reach it on this frame you, <laughs> the bat would either be down here or up here but it managed to get in right there, and that's because I pause buffered perfectly so that this will happen, and it's so good. So now, it, now you can see that it touched the wall, so it reflects off of it. That was so precise, and it was so difficult, and I'm hoping that this will make it easier, but apparently I need to take the average of this blue line versus the average of the red line starting from here to all the way uh, here. That is... Uh, well, I can show it to you this way. Um, f oops, wrong one. From uh, this all the way to this intersection here. That's uh, that's what I wanted to figure out. It's a bit uh, uh, to to figure out the average like that. I need to get the integral from here to here. But this bound is, uh, yeah, the integral 
bound is based on a transcendental equation that, uh, sorry, you know, I don't think transcendental equation is the correct word for this, but it is a this is an equation where I can't put the x, like I can't solve this equation for x. It's literally impossible. So I'm just, <laughs> how do I get an integral bound when it's like that, right? So I'm, I'm just stumped right now. This should have been easy, like, <laughs> but I'm just stumped. So um, I think I just rambled on long enough. I'm going to practice ending the video. Uh, what should I say? Um, Enjoy life, yeah. <laughs> See you, space cowboy. Um, fuck. I, you know what? Yeah, I need an outro. <laughs> I need an outro. I don't know. I'm I'm done.